Welcome to the Trail Chasers Podcast. This episode is presented by Nexen Tire. The Rodian MTX tires are designed to provide the off-road performance you need to get the most out of your vehicle. If you want to upgrade your trail game, go to nexentireusa.com. Today on the show, we talk to Rochelle Croft about her recent victory at the Rebel Rally. We learn how conquering small goals and strategy lead to an epic victory. We also play some listener voicemails and read Instagram feedback. All right, guys, we uh, we got some traction. We got some. You know, Matt made the call. Matt was like, "Hey, if you want to well, talk about well, stuff, well, the bat signals out. Like, yeah, so like Matt, leave Matt, a message. Yeah, so we did get a couple <laughs> messages. So let's uh, let's start with the first one from Jeremy. Hey, Cody, it's Jeremy. Oh, I'm Matt. Jose. Sorry, guys. Hey, uh, listen to Jeep Talk Show. Apparently, Tammy's coming out to California. What do you guys think? Turn up the idea, maybe possibly. Uh, to a listener meetup at the Slash X Cafe. I don't know how timing it work out or any other details. I mean, that's you guys behind the scenes. But from where I'm sitting, a meetup at Slash X sounds like a pretty good time with everybody. Yeah, I, I uh, Jeremy, that's a fantastic idea. Uh, I had reached out to uh, Jeep Mama, Tammy Jeep Mama, uh, on social media about her trip and. Uh, trying to figure out when she was going to be in California. She said she wasn't sure yet because they had some rough dates of travel. Um, and I'm going to be at SEMA next week. So I will reach out to her again and find out where she's going to be. Uh, at one point, she talked about maybe trying to make it to SEMA, uh, which will be the the beginning of, uh, well, three days after this comes out. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. I will uh, reach out to her, and if I can coordinate something, then we'll post it up on uh, social medias and let people know. But a uh, great idea, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Uh, we got the next uh, next call from uh, <laughs> uh, Jeep McClellan again, uh, responding why, to... Why does the text say Ali G? Uh, yeah, because Google, the, the Google voice to I think text... I trend... just super like, interesting... You know, hey, uh, the internet and AI is becoming a real thing. Yeah, Google Voice translates it to text, and it's not always accurate. So let's see what he has to say. Hey, guys. It's uh, Ali uh, G. McFallen on Instagram. Uh, I just wanted to call in and uh, share an experience I had recently. And I also wanted to clarify, when I say I was laughing at you guys, I mean like you're comedians and you say funny shit. <laughs> and that's why I'm laughing at what you say, not at you personally. Well, at least not most of the time. Uh, anyway, um, I wanted to share an experience uh, that I had. I drove recently at Nissan Frontier. Yes, I found mm -hmm. a unicorn in my area, and it was a Pro 4X as well. And you know what? I get it. Matt, I totally get it. I totally understand why you love that thing so much. That thing drives like a Jeep. It's narrow. It rides it rough. It works really good. Uh, you know, it, it rocks back and forth. Like, it's it's basically a Jeep with a truck with a different badge on it. And, and I totally get it. Um, definitely not going to trade my TJ in for a Nissan Frontier. But I get it, man. I totally get it. And going from a Renegade to that Frontier, <laughs> you must be in off-road heaven. Anyway, have a good one. Keep up the great work. You guys are awesome. Ciao for now. So, Matt, tip of the spear. I, exactly. <laughs> tip tip of the spear. Uh, you know, it's not I don't, the cult of uh, Frontier. That's I'll be the uh, I'll be the David. No, not the the uh, the grand. <laughs> no, I was going to say. Um, <laughs> 
Well, the David Koresh of, of the <laughs> oh, Frontiers. Oh no! You're gonna end oh. up like holed up in a in a in shack a someplace, and they're gonna have to. And burn I'm gonna you go out. go down and in a blaze of glory. <laughs> yeah. Going down with uh, my frontier. Well, he had a lot of benefits <laughs> as uh, leading that, that uh, cult. How did we? Uh, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's that was Jose. 100 percent right yeah i uh i don't endorse i'd like to i'd like to step away from those comments i don't i mean i did bring about david koresh yeah i and I i'm just stating facts here i don't endorse the creation of a cult around anything uh but uh you know whatever uh that's up to you man a cult uh, uh, based around me and my frontier that sounds amazing to me <laughs> <laughs> that sounds super awesome. And just, it's funny that you mention, uh, or that uh, Ali mentions the Renegade. Uh, we had another listener, Legit Van One, on Instagram. He uh, spotted a uh, silver Renegade with uh, lift and tires and uh, brush bars and everything and took pictures of it and sent it to us to make sure that he's like, I saw this and I thought of Is, Matt. Was Matt in town? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how you have become the tip of the spear of the uh, frontier and the first thing people think of when they see a renegade. Well, to be honest with you, you can't be the tip of the spear for like Toyotas because there's, I don't know how many tip of, how many spears and tips or whatever. <laughs> so you can't be tip of the spear of Jeeps, you know? No. So there's nobody, uh, you know, tip of the spear frontier. You're in an, Whoa, unta- you're in an, you're in a, you're in an untapped market right now. That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm tapping that market. <laughs> <laughs> Tap well, well, it in. Uh, we, we <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just horrible. So, uh, <laughs> going back to uh, going back to the uh, uh, last episode, we had uh, some feedback from John Gamble. He said he's totally with me on the commando. Would love to find one uh, of the bullnose types. Uh, my issue is with space, and I need to spend uh, about the same amount of money for a TJ rear axle. Uh, I caught Matt's new word, Derwinchian. <laughs> I, I caught Matt's new word, Derwinchian. What is that? Perhaps you could get him uh, to use in the sentence to improve the technical expertise. My son and I have been talking about doing the Mojave Trail, uh, so sure, be sure to let us know when you're going on it, um, or maybe Pismo. So thanks, John, for the feedback. We've had some conversation with him in the background, and uh, you know we are we are definitely looking forward to more of your guys' feedback. Uh, um, you know, voicemails, 951-394-DIRT, emails at thetrailchasers at gmail.com. You can go to our website, trailchasers.net slash contact and drop us an email. It's pretty... Der, der I know. I need to... We need to... Was that something I said, like, uh, at the... During the uh, the drunken uh, expo episode, maybe? Probably. I, I don't know. D-I-R-W-R-E-N-C-H-I-O-N, right. Derwenchian. That's like... Uh, I thought it was like Derwiner Schnitzel slash Wrenchin or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the okay. reference is to, but we'll uh, maybe uh, maybe John can give us uh, some uh, use some it more in detail. a sentence um, to improve can I have our definition, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you going to use that Derwenchin? <laughs> uh, can I borrow it? Uh, no, you, you could All keep right. your hands off my Derwenchin, dude. That's that's a private <laughs> matter. No, we, we don't need any of that. There you go, going creepy again. Uh, it's, it's who I am. It's, it's who I am. Um, so this episode will release on uh, Thursday, October 31st, Halloween 2019. Uh, I will be, a couple days after that, going to SEMA with my wife. We'll be out there uh, covering some of the stuff out there for a few days. So the next episode, I'm going to try to get clipped together Wednesday night-ish, Thursday. But uh, the next episode might not come out till Friday because of uh, travel and everything. So that's just going to be a series of conversations that we have um, from SEMA. And uh, you don't want me and Jose to like try and put an episode out. Ooh, if you you guys are I, oh man, it's just it's <laughs> oh, just man, just uh, some ramblings oh. on, on our phones. Uh, okay. we just record. <laughs> you, you we guys. just ooh, how about this? We just call each other's voicemail <laughs> and leave messages and then play oh. it, and then play it like this, somehow this, try and download it. This is an amazing idea, Matt. So oh. you guys have access to the house. You know how to get in here. I we, we wait. <laughs> I do? Yes. <laughs> well, I'll make sure that you have access to the house. Um, you do? This th- this is going to be... 
Uh, who, <laughs> oh, yes, you guys are going to oh, put no. out an episode on Monday. <laughs> oh, so, uh, so listeners, I don't know what the next episode is going to be like oh, at all. Uh, no plans at all. There's, uh, there's plenty of uh, Coors Light in 805. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do the uh, we'll do the SEMA episode the following week, maybe. So I'm going to try to convince these guys to do uh, to click the buttons on the computer and make stuff happen. And we'll see what happens. But keep your ears peeled <laughs> because we just end up hanging out in your house <laughs> like the whole night it's, it's, it's like be dude like, it's wednesday it's, why are they still there yeah it's just gonna be just like the the uh around the campfire at mojave trail last year hey guys here's the recorder yeah record your shenanigans it's gonna be uh, and then we won't we'll just end up <laughs> be watching movies it'll or, be four hours of so uh so what'd you guys do today what'd you, how was work what do you want to talk about? No, that's nah. not that's not how it would go. It would just be crazy ramblings. So you guys may get a conspiracy episode next week. There's a lot of flat earth stuff going on right now. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the world of flat earth. Uh, all right. I'm gonna we're gonna end this here and we'll save all of the conspiracy theories for next week's episode. Are you guys ready for this? It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I'm did I commit to something yes, just now? Yes, yes, yeah, you, well, you did. committed me too. Uh, <laughs> thanks. I don't think so, thanks, bro. Uh, oh. Edit, edit that. This is happening. <laughs> You're listening to a four x four, four by four radio network podcast. The Trail Chasers podcast is a member of the four x four radio network. If you want more off-road shenanigans in your ear holes, go to four x four radio network dot com to hear episodes of the Jeep Talk Show, the four x four podcast, the Center Steer podcast, and on the trail with Kevin and Scott. All right, everybody, back by popular demand, and because I begged really hard, we have Rochelle Croft in in the uh, in our video chat. How are you doing tonight, Rochelle? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good. Thank you so awesome. much for coming back. Uh, you know, we talked to you just a few weeks ago, right before you took off for the Rebel Rally, and uh, uh, we I, I was paying attention to everything you guys were going on. I made a couple posts about you know the the rankings and stuff as you were going. It looks like you took off to a early lead and you ended up winning you and Taylor your partner won the, the rebel rally and I am so excited to have you back to hear this story so let's start off with where we left off that's how I like winning things I like jumping out to the early lead explain to me a time then, in your life when that's happened I don't know an exact time I just in my <laughs> mind that's how I'd like to do it just if, one w- yeah when it happens that's how I want it to okay. happen All right. uh, so the last time we talked you were just getting the Lexus ready to go and heading out so what kind of bring us up to speed on where you're at today yeah so thanks again for having me on guys really appreciate it um, I have been home less than a week I uh, let's see where I'm trying to remember where we left off we left off with me leaving in like five days or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, you were just you were loading everything up and getting okay. ready to head out. Yep. Got it. <laughs> the last few weeks are kind of a blur. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I am currently, yeah, like I said, I've been home for about a little less than a week. And um, Clay and I kind of did a high five. He's, he's actually filming now with the crew. Oh, nice. Um, so we swapped. So I'm home now with the boys. <laughs> and <laughs> that's, I, I'm, and pic- I'm picturing great. them in the driveway. She rolls up in a dirty yeah. Lexus. He's rolling out in his in his in his the XO gear. All right, sweetheart, you got the kids. They're, they make you, a tag. Yep. Yeah, it's like tag. I, I kept him alive yeah, for two in. weeks. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh man, it felt like that for sure this time around. Um, so yeah, we Taylor and I had an unbelievable rally. It was so much fun. Um, one of the hardest things I've done just. And I've, this is my fifth one total that I've done now, but just how hard we pushed. And because we did come out with that early lead, we didn't realize how stressful it would be to keep that lead <laughs> <laughs> for the entire time. Cause all of a sudden you feel like you just have a bullseye on your back and everybody's just waiting for you to make a mistake so they can slide into that spot. Mm-hmm. Um, well, well, with that, it, with that, sorry to cut yeah. you off, but with that in mind, when mm-hmm. you guys, you know, you get yourself down there, you do all the pre, the pre inspections and all that stuff. When you guys were at the starting line, had you guys discussed what your strategy was going to be? Like, did you have a plan, or was it all right? Mm-hmm. We're just going to push hard. Yeah, we did have a plan. Um, she came to Montana um, a few weeks before the rally, and because we hadn't, we knew each other, but hadn't spent a lot of time together up until that point, and so. We actually sat in a coffee shop here in Bozeman and um, just kind of laid out how we would attack this thing. We both found out we're very competitive people. So our goal right from the beginning was um, 
very much the same, which is so important in a teammate that you guys have that expectation. And, and I kind of told her, I said, Hey, what do you think about if we can snag a lead in those first two days? So if we can come in and just do absolutely crush it and do our 100% hardest that we can to get an early lead. And if then we can be consistent and keep it, it might hold till the end. And so honestly, that was our strategy. Um, because doing these rallies a lot, you, you see a lot of those teams kind of use that day one as kind of like, get your foot wet, like mm-hmm. kind of a practice day. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see how on the last day things shake up so much. And so that was my thought is I was like, man, if we could own this thing from the beginning, we might have a shot <laughs> at taking this thing. So that was it. <laughs> so I know you, so you guys had that plan, but I, I saw that you guys were drawn. I mean, you guys were drawn first, right? To go. I mean, did, how did we, that, was that like added pressure since you guys were the first uh, ones? Yeah. And it's really cool how the rebel does it because, um, they keep it really fair so that when you come in at night, at the end of the day, everyone draws for their start time the next day. So it doesn't matter what place you're in. doesn't matter where you are. Everybody has that fair shot. And honestly, teams don't like drawing first <laughs> because you have less time to get everything done in the yeah. morning because oh, you leave yeah. first. Right. And so it's actually, it's, um, yeah, it's a little harder. And so we pulled in and Taylor, I ended up drawing numbers all week and Taylor was like, just don't pull number one, whatever you do, <laughs> don't pull number one. I was like, all right, no worries. And then I, of course, pulled number one. Oh. Um, <laughs> the other thing too, is that you, since you are first off the line, you are blazing the trail for everyone that day. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, there's no tracks to follow. There's no, no, which may or may not be a good thing. I was watching some of the uh, the live tracking, and there was one team, I can't remember which one it was, that you can see they were following everyone's tracks, and then all of a sudden they ended up going completely <laughs> the wrong direction, and it turned come back around. <laughs> so I would think that like being first, it'd be easier to get lost, but who am I about getting lost? I mean, I don't, I get lost. You're the, well, I, I, I should I call you Magellan. I already opened it up. I already, guys, you already <laughs> You're know. the king. <laughs> You're you did lay that one out pretty good. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so, it's it's hard. But what I, I told, and Taylor kind of had the same reservation. She's like, oh, no, I hate going first because I have no idea if we're doing it right. And I and I said, well, I actually kind of like going first because it doesn't mess with your head. Because oh. then you're not seeing, oh, well, these guys are over here. These guys are over there. These guys are there. You just have to be confident right from the start about mm-hmm. what you're doing and you just have to go for it. Well, timing so, wise, how, when, you know, what's the time difference between when number one goes off the line and number two goes off the line? It's only like two minutes. Okay. So, so theoretically so, number one takes off. You could, you could yep. follow the, the dust trail of number one if you wanted to the whole totally. time. Okay. You could. Um, yeah. How it's set up is it, it, they do make it a little difficult to do that. They do have the four by four class split into two groups. Oh, okay. So that you're not sure if that guy, they actually have, they'll put checkpoints fairly close to each other. Oh. So you really need to make sure it's actually yours. So Otherwise, just, you, just you cause there's someone in front of you doesn't mean they're in your class going to the same checkpoint. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hmm. Yep. I would just Which be following good. whoever's in front of me and be like, this is a <laughs> sightseeing trip. Here we go, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so day, day one. So the, the night before, so the day before you guys got testing, right? Uh, did you, mm-hmm. in the process of that test day, did, was there anything that you were like, oh, we really need to tweak this before we go? Or did you feel at the end of test day, you had it dialed in? Um, I was feeling pretty good at the end of our day. Yeah, they call it day zero, which is unscored. And it's basically a transition from like Tahoe to get you to your first base camp. And it ended up being a really, it was a 10 hour driving day. It was, wow. we covered a lot of miles. Um, so right off of that, they just throw you in. <laughs> but, um, I felt like Taylor and I did pretty good. There's always that, like, um, I always feel so bad because the navigator has to tell me like 50 million times, like, okay, we're going 1.2 kilometers at 360 degrees. And I'm like, 2.2 kilometers or 1.2 kilometers? And what? like, 1. What's, 2. what's a kilometer? Okay, what's a kilometer? 1.2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would be like, hold this hold is, the fort. This is America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where are we? We we don't use the metric system How am America? I going to go around in circles uh, 1.2 kilometers? Let's just call it quits. Let's we're well, uh, Going around in circles, you have, you know, oh, you have mastered. If you uh, ever do a rally like this, you will love the metric system. And <laughs> oh. kilometers are so much easier to measure than miles. 
Uh, I don't I w- even know what, how long a mile is in my brain, but I know a kilometer. I will <laughs> wow. take I will take your word for it because I don't know where I'm at in any given moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. so after day zero, you felt pretty good. You guys were mm-hmm. first for day one. You you take off. Tell me about what like like was there adrenaline? Was it fear? What was it like the minute the the, the flag dropped and you took off from the line? Oh man, so much adrenaline and excitement. It just We'd been waiting for that day for so long. And then you get there and it's funny in these rallies, it's kind of anticlimactic because you can't like peel off the line because it's not a race <laughs> for speed. You know, it's like, it's strategic. It's, but you're if, going however slow you're you, going, but. If you wanted to, so, could you peel yeah. off the line? You could. Right. You, See, you that's may how be I'd frowned do. upon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, who, are the, who are these yay hoes? It's just the trail chaser guys. Don't even yeah, bother. Yeah, just out. Uh, <laughs> um, you may not make many friends doing it, but it was. Yeah, what else is new? Yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was so exciting. I mean, it just felt like it was that moment where I was trying to like capture it in my mind of like, I want to remember this moment. It's been so long to get here, and we're sitting here in this Lexus, and I'm with an awesome teammate. And we're going to go do this. Like, we are going to give it our all, all day long, every day. So, so as you're, awesome. I don't remember what day it was, uh, but I remember there was an interview with you posted, you guys posted where you, you strategic, you made a strategic decision to skip a couple things to, to, to focus mm-hmm. on getting points. Was that on day one? What, what day was that? That was actually only on day two. Day two. Okay. So and tell me, tell me about that decision. Yeah, that was all Taylor. She, Come to find out, she loves strategy games. Okay. That's and the Rebel is all about strategy. And they will purposefully give you days with so many points that there's no physical way to get them all. And so she looked at it. She always plots all of her points in the morning. And if you do that, you can actually see your day. Like the route kind of pops up at you. And you can totally see the layout and what kind of the plan is for the day. And so... We, we decide, one of the other things we decided going into this rally is everything would be up for negotiation. And if any, if either of us had a gut check, we would honor that. Okay. And that's the same in our XO team as well. So, um, even if we decided one thing in the morning and we get to the afternoon and it's just not feeling right or something seems to have shifted, we're okay to change that plan if it's going to be better. Okay. And so we, it was a super long day. It was the first day actually we got into Big Dune. Um, Ended up getting stuck that day because I uh, <laughs> forgot that I had left the parking brake on. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even edit cool. That. I just left the edit, yeah, we're not gonna, <laughs> we're gonna Cody, cut Cody, that go out. Ahead and edit that cut that out. out. I, don't even, I don't even want to allow you to admit that on our show. No. Like, <laughs> oh, so, so go on. <laughs> <laughs> so we got stuck there. We got out, air down, used Mac Track. We were out in ten minutes. You know, no big deal. But, um. We're going through the checkpoints in the dunes and a lot of people can waste their time in there because you'll see all these checkpoints and you're having fun. You're in the stands. So everybody wants to stay there and yeah, yeah. figure it all out. So we were trying to move through there as fast as we can. We get out and we're driving. Um, it's another kind of transit to get to the next section. And Taylor is looking at the map and she's going over all the points and looking over everything. And she said, okay, so I have an idea and I think you might like it. And I was like, okay. And she's like, so... There's this whole section here, and it's only worth this amount of points. And everybody is probably going to go for it. But then we have this whole new section by base camp, so that puts you closer to base camp, first of all, which is always good. And these checkpoints are worth like double those points. She said, what if we skip this and move right to there and rack up these points that not a lot of people are going to have time to get to? And I was like, done, let's do it. Sounds good. (laughs) And we just did it. And um, it ended up being in a new uh, um, open area. So you could drive, you know, ev- anywhere you wanted. And um, I couldn't believe the ruts um, where they had these checkpoints, like the road, <laughs> the road yeah, right, that yeah. was on the map, so-called road. And it was definitely testing everything the Lexus had. And this was only day two. So I was like, I can't break the car right now. I mean, the sun's going down. It's getting dark. The ruts are like, I mean, you, you could barely drive a Jeep through that thing. Yeah. So it was just this really slow process. And um, But we were able to stag a blue checkpoint there, which was worth a lot of points that a lot of other people didn't get. And got to base camp on time, which is a given 10 points. Oh, wow. And almost 
there was a lot of girls that came in late that night. So you lose, penalize that 10 points if you're late. Yes. Oh, wow. So by, by skipping the fun, the fun points and getting all the the, uh-huh. the high points. So how many other people in uh, in the competition, did, did any other people in that competition come up with that same strategy? I'm actually not sure. When I was looking at the scores the next morning, it looks like there was a hand, I mean, maybe five teams that had grabbed some of those checkpoints close to base camp. Okay. So not many. Wow. So everybody else did exactly what Taylor thought they were going to do. Wow. Kudos to... Mm-hmm. Uh, Kudos to Taylor for coming up with that idea. That's pretty awesome to come up with the strategy. Good. Yeah, that uh, that's awesome. So how did so you come in day one as a as a leader? You you do a great strategy on Tuesday to come in as a leader. How were you feeling at that point? By the time you got at the end of day two, how were you feeling like confidence wise about what was ahead? Um, it was a mix of feeling okay. We've done good for two days. Can we keep it? Can we hold on to it? Um, another mix of like, this is really stressful because it felt like day one was just so exciting. I've never seen my name in first place before and neither had Taylor. Oh. Mm. So to wake up and see that for the first time, you're just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. <laughs> Especially <laughs> it's something day, like this that you've yeah. been so excited to do. Like, you know, it's not, yeah. it's not the potato sack race at the local uh, park. This is like yeah. a major <laughs> thing that you're excited about. For sure. And so by morning of day three, I think it hit both of us of like, okay, we really have our work cut out for us. And we it just felt really, it was just a lot of pressure that I wasn't for anticipating. What was the, um, I'm sorry to cut you off. What, yeah. what was the point margin between you and second and third place? Uh, it wasn't much. I think it was, oh man, the first day it was only like maybe five or six points, oh. I want to say. And by second day, it was maybe ten or fifteen points. So, so uh, close enough to where a, a miss mm-hmm. on your part or a good strategy on somebody else, it was still up in the air. For sure. Oh, yep. Wow. And you know, and when you've been doing these rallies, and even when you guys probably have seen now, as you follow it, like everything shakes out at the very last day. So it's very much anybody's game the whole way through. Hmm. So we never wanted to get like super uber confident or like, oh, we got this. We can totally get it. was nope, none of that. It was every day we show up and we're going to give it our all and we'll see what happens. And that's all we can control. Wow. But we're not. Yeah. No resting. (laughs) Well, I was just going to say in the course of the 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 the, uh, event, was there any moment that you guys hit? like a, a point where you like you, you peaked in your stress level or you were you were like, oh, my God, we're not going to make this. Or, you know, w- was there any moment that was like more stress than you thought you'd have? <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say there was a couple. We we made two big mistakes. Um, the first one, I believe, was on day three. Um, I'm trying to get all my days, days straight, but um, we... Emily even told us in the briefing that they were putting checkpoints close to each other and you had to really be sure that you knew which one was yours. Oh. And so we were just doing our thing day three. We were having a good morning. We were having fun and we were in the groove and we're bombing down the road. And then all of a sudden we're like, Oh, yep, there's a flag. Grab it. And she grabbed it. And then I looked at the, um, terror trip and I was like, didn't you say we were supposed to go 1.6 kilometers? <laughs> this is one of those moments. Yeah. And she was like, oh, crap. And so she like quickly like remeasures and she was like, that was not ours. So, so, so can you just put it back, like not tell anybody? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, you, I went, do you get oh, penalized for... We wanted to. Do you get penalized you do, so for getting the wrong flight? do. So it was minus 10 points. Oh, wow. Um, oh, man. Yeah. But the cool thing that how they have it set up, and they call that, it's a basically they call it a wide miss. So you clicked on something that wasn't yours. It wasn't in your radius. It's a wide miss penalty of 10 points. Um, but what they do allow you to do is go and get your correct checkpoint and you can wash it out. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. So it was just a zero. Uh, well, um, yeah. But it still hurts. Still, yeah. <laughs> still, that's, I mean, that's, that's you, time. Yeah. The time and the, you don't get the additional uh-huh. 10 points and. Uh, I think most yep. of most of my life can be summed up in a wide miss. Other than my wife and daughter, <laughs> I think I think yeah, my wife and daughter is the washout of the rest of my wide misses. Um, 
So, so what was the other, uh, you said there was two mistakes. What was the other one? Yep. So the next one would be, um, it was day four or five and we were in Johnson Valley and it's just a hard, hard driving day. If any of you guys have been there, but especially in a stock car, it's just whoops for days. Yep. And (laughs) you have to go so slow (laughs) everywhere you go. And, um, so I got to the end of that day and we were just beat. We, just tired and turned my brain off. We roll into base camp and, you know, people are asking questions and they've got the live going and you're supposed to signal your tracker when you roll across the finish line into base camp to get your 10 points. And they're like, Hey, where's your tracker? I'll turn it off for you. I'm like, yep, right here. Brain is shut it off. Like I'm all done. And then later on, um, the score director came over and she was like, Hey, so I think there's something wrong with your tractor. Like you didn't signal when you got to base camp. And I was like, no, oh, no. no. Uh, the answer to that is yes, I did. <laughs> I clicked, I clicked that button. <laughs> there mu- we should call the IT guy. Cause I sent that email. Yeah. I swear to you. You're like, you're right. There is something wrong with this track. <laughs> oh, and I just, she was like, Oh no, no, no. And then she was so sweet. She gave me the benefit of the doubt. She's like, I'm sure you signaled. I'm sure it's our fault. Um, we'll just double check it. And I was like, I don't remember saying like, I was so tired. I could not remember if I'd done it or not. And come to find out she came and grabbed us at dinner and she was like, yeah, so you didn't signal when you got to base camp. So we got penalized 10 points just for that. So even though they knew you were there, they saw, I mean, but you didn't follow the rules. Yeah. Yep. It's in the rule book. Like that's it. And so, and yeah, they were like, well, you could contest it. I was like, no, it's in the rule book. I don't want to win that way. Like, that was yeah. our mistake. Mm. We were tired. We didn't do it. That's live how it is. Live and learn. Yeah. And, yep, we never did it again. <laughs> 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 um, but that next morning, I'd say, was is was kind of the culmination and the morning of Glamis of just like, okay, in our minds, we've thrown away 20 points. Yeah. If mm. we lose by 10 or 20 points, oh, that's yeah. really going to suck. Oh, yeah. So oh. bad. And it's just this mental battle that the, and this is why the rebel is so great. Like it's all these mental things and you have to really throw those mistakes away and move forward. Like mm. you can't sit and wallow in it and stew about it. And, um, but that morning was really hard. Taylor and I were just off in communication because we were both frustrated that we'd done that. Well, and you're and probably if, if, physically and emotionally if, worn if down. If that were me and yeah. you, oh. neither yeah. one of us would live the other down oh. like oh i can't <laughs> believe oh. you caused us it would be 20 points thanksgiving 2025 yes. and i would bring it up to 2045 sure whatever it'd be endless and every time you did something good with your life i'd, I'd have, be like i remember that time made. i'd have shirts made <laughs> and every every man, uh, one member point, of the family 1.6 yes. kilometers yeah exactly <laughs> yes that's how that would go i love that oh that's that would i need happen. to make her a, a guess that says that on it like yes. 1.6 kilometers Oh. <laughs> Instead of the the one point twenty one gigawatts, gigawatts yes. the one twenty exactly. one. Yeah. Uh, so you you make it all the way through. You get to that last day. You walk me through yeah. the last day. So you start off rough, but I'm assuming you guys get your rhythm back and and walk me through how mm-hmm. that the end of the day happens. That last day was tough. I was having a tough morning, as she was. Um, Dune day in Glamis is always mentally really hard for people. Uh, myself included, it just feels it's there's a lot of fear that surrounds it because you just don't know what could happen. There's always the possibility that you could really mess up and roll your car like like there's just so much out there that could go wrong, you know. Yep. And done, done it. And I've driven <laughs> Seen it. Yeah. <laughs> and I've driven dunes so many times and it's still this mental thing that I have to choose that I'm going to get through and overcome it. And so hey, at the end of the day, it's not your car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's right. You can, you, I mean, this is true, but oh, you give me someone else's oh, car no. in Glamis and you're going to see some sending. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Oh, so, so there's a lot we, of stress and anxiety. There's a and... lot of stress. We're leading and we're not leading by much. I think we're leading by like 13 points. I want to say, which is, could be one checkpoint. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and we know all these people are just hot on our tail. And so we go into that morning and I'm just, I'm mentally like really trying to get it together. And I know Taylor's doing her best to get it together. And so I talked to her and I said, okay, this is the day Clay had talked to me about this before we left. And then I've heard 
um, I've chatted with the team five guys about this too, but they said the best strategy you can have in those moments is you build off of each small win and one win gets you to the next win. And then that gets you to the next win. And it can be so, so small to everybody else, but to you, like it's whatever you make it. And so I told Taylor, I said, this is a day (laughs) of one checkpoint at a time and one dune hit at a time, like one hill. And we are going to celebrate every single thing (laughs) that comes our way today. And we're going to, cause if I thought about the entire day, it was too overwhelming at that point. Yeah. I couldn't like, hmm. I couldn't do it. And so I was like, but I can do one checkpoint and then we're going to celebrate that. And we're going to hoot and holler and we're going to get super excited. And then we're going to go to the next one. And then we're going to go to the next one. And that was how we did the whole day. Wow. And we also had some amazing help. Um, it's a really fun day for teams cause you, you're actually encouraged to help each other out for safety reasons. Um, and so it's it's fun to be with teams to be like, hey, the the blues over there. This is how you drive it. This is where I went. Or hey, let's team up together and go for this over here. What do you think? And it's just a really fun day. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, so we had some amazing girls kind of rally around us, and they were just like, you got this. You can totally do it. We'll help you out. We'll get you here. And then it was just each one just built on the next. And there came a point in the day where there was three. Um, I think there were blue checkpoints and it was in a really technical area of the dunes. It was deep into Glamis. I don't know if, how familiar you are with us, the deep, so-called deep uh, Glamis. Princess. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we've been pretty deep familiar. in Glamis. We've been deep okay. enough into Glamis at night where I've literally laid my uh, 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 myself down on the sand and said, I will just sleep here to the morning because I have no idea yeah. where we're at. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's yeah, 80 degrees out. I'll be fine. Yeah. It's massive. So you, have you guys seen the swing set and the flagpole? Yes. the uh, And the swing set, uh, tangent note, the swing set was built for a friend of ours named Art Wood. Oh, it's a memorial. Okay. He uh, uh, Art passed away. He's big in the uh, sand sports, uh, uh, motor sports, side-by-side stuff down here in Southern California. Um, I have not oh, physically awesome. seen it yet. We haven't gone to go see it yet, but no. I, I, I talked to Art's dad about it. And so that's a, it's a, it's on my list to go see soon. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And that f- is cool. Thanks for the backstory on that. The flagpole, uh, I thought, I didn't think my bike was going to make it back from there. And I thought it was going to be part of that monument. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> just call I it, could see why. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've, we've yeah. done some damage to ourselves out in Glamis. Yeah. So. Okay. So I, so. I can understand why. So um, on our checkpoint sheet that day, they have certain points that say why it'll say like 7X, 8X, and it will say it's either like it's a navigation, extra navigation challenge or it's an extra driving technical challenge. And so Emily had talked about those points that morning in the briefing and we knew and she even said, she's like, I drove this three weeks ago and it was very technical. And when Emily Miller says that a section of dunes is technical, <laughs> it's going to be very, very difficult. <laughs> um, and there's been wind, there's been rain since, and she hasn't driven it since. So it was basically like, hey, if you don't know what you're doing, do not go in there. Like, it's it's deep in there. Hmm. So Taylor and I decided there was a turning point at um, the 16th checkpoint where you could turn and go into this to get these extra points. Or you could stay out and just kind of go on your day grab all the rest of your points and head back to base camp. And so I told Taylor in the morning, I was just like, I don't know if, if we need to do that, maybe we're far enough ahead. Maybe we, who knows, maybe other girls won't do it. Um, but we decided as we talked, we're like, let's make that decision when we get there. We can't make that decision right now. And so we get there that afternoon. Um, it was actually really, really hard day. It, there ended up being a team that actually rolled their vehicle in the dunes Ooh. and we were first on scene. Everybody um, that okay? morning they were okay totally safe yep just um yeah what, was, totally fine the car did great was it their car Sorry? was it their car it was oh yeah. man i know i know um they were amazing and so was and it a ford <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just no. i have a <laughs> what, what? suspicion <laughs> you just say leave it there like, yeah just leave it <laughs> <laughs> just leave it no she was amazing she actually um, was adamant about getting it out after the experience. And so they helped wench it out and she actually drove it, helped oh, wow. drive it cool. out. She was cool. incredible. She was like, Nope, I'm going to do it. Hmm. Um, so we'd seen that and it, that took a little bit just to shake off. Um, cause now all of a sudden that brings everything into focus. Yeah. Like, what are we doing out here? 
well, why are we doing this? Like, <laughs> this is legit. Like stuff happens out here. You yeah. Know? Um, so we, so fast forward, we get to the afternoon and we get to that point of where we have to make that decision on that checkpoint. And Taylor walks over and she looks and she's like, there's like four sets of tire tracks going into this area. Oh no. <laughs> she was like, we have to go in there. Yeah. And I was like, Oh man. Yeah. Cause, and cause... she said something that, that got me. She's like, I think we'll regret it if we don't. Oh. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I'm like, you guys, oh. you guys have been killing it. And yeah. Then just to, Turn 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 the other way at that point. I don't think exactly. I, I think you guys might have been that like uh, re- might have regretted it after the fact. Like absolutely, I absolutely would have regretted it, and so would she. So a couple other teams pulled up with us, and I said, "Hey, girls, you want to go in?" And they were just like, "Yeah, let's do it." <laughs> and so we ended up kind of in a conga line, and we just all attacked it and went in, and um ended up getting another vehicle unstuck from a pretty precarious situation. There was snap straps and eight sets of max tracks involved and wow. Jimmy wow. Lewis on his bike, <laughs> <laughs> making sure we were all good and, um, but got her out. Okay. And then we were all able to, um, for, get to the swing set, which is really cool. I didn't even know that was in there. And it was all, it was all these guys in their buggies, just like, yeah <laughs> you can get cars in here yeah oh <laughs> yeah absolutely and we're like yeah you can <laughs> <laughs> if, that was if cool. you're a lady now, on the rebel rally and, but you boys might not be able yeah, to handle it guess yeah. what all those drunk guys went back to get their stock trucks <laughs> and they all got stuck halfway there i guarantee you <laughs> you you saved pretty you good. saved two vehicles on the way in but you caused a traffic jam <laughs> and all kinds of accidents when you made it there i guarantee you (laughs) that's funny oh man it was pretty awesome and they're just like what are you doing out here we've never seen cars in here i spent a hundred thousand dollars on this buggy yeah Yeah. (laughs) they went back to their builder and they're like yeah i just saw a lexus go over (laughs) exactly (laughs) they had the ac on and everything (laughs) yeah (laughs) it was fun um so yeah we were ended up um so we were able to grab all those points and doing the recoveries in the dunes took up a lot of our time. So we had no idea how close the standings were at that point, which is nice. I'm glad we were really removed from it. Yeah. But at home, I guess like Clay like had to like walk away. He couldn't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nikki was just like, she had this little like rally video going and she was just like yelling at it all day. Um, because we were further off the line that day too. And so a lot of people were in front of us getting all the points. Oh, we just hadn't gotten there yet, yeah. but they don't really, you don't know that all yeah. you see is all these points tallies, going on yeah. and mm. not us, you know? So <laughs> we got out. Um, we had a certain amount of time to get back to base camp and I'd never been so happy that dune driving in there was some of the toughest I've done. It was the actual driving. Was it hard? It's just, you know, picking the right line oh, mm-hmm. yeah. for your vehicle over and over. And that's where it breaks down. It's like, I can only do one hill at a time right now. So we're, yeah. just, and we had amazing teams around us helping us spot. They had a Jeep. So they'd go on ahead and spot. Um, Team Locos Mogos had their awesome little Tacoma out there. That's uh, Aaron and, Sachs, by the way. That was Aaron Sachs. Yes. Who Erica, we, yeah. Yeah, Erica. I'm sorry to say Aaron. Erica, I said we interviewed yeah. Erica a couple weeks ago, so she was out there too. Awesome. Cool. Um, the, she is fabulous. Yeah. The, and the thing about Glamis is you t- you talk about the line, and if you think, if you take, if you just like, oh, yeah, it's sand. Okay, no big deal. But it is so rhythmic. You, you have to get up and over. And once you're over, you have to almost at the peak make a decision where you're going to go next. Because if you make mm-hmm. the wrong decision, you're back down in the same uh, bowl you were just came out of. And, you know, Matt yep. and I exp- have experience going out there in uh, dirt bikes, quads, side by sides, and I've done it in Jeeps. And it's whenever I was in my Jeep following these guys in their vehicles, I would take a completely different line because there was no way I was mm-hmm. going to make that. I'd have to go hit these four small little hills to get up to where they're at. Um, and to your point, it's you have you have I can't to imagine doing it in a stock vehicle. Yeah, that's what I, I was... No, <laughs> like, kudos, granola bars to you. Yeah. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> yeah. That is crazy. Well, that's kind of what I, where I was going is, that, you know, taking the hill-by-hill hill approach, you get up there and you go, okay, what's even, my... Even though, if given the same opportunity, Matt, here's a stock vehicle. It's not yours. So you can just go ahead and mash it if you want. I still can't <laughs> imagine how... Uh, I can't imagine a route... 
to get a stock vehicle back to the flagpole. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. <laughs> Truly. It was, oh man, it was, it was a team effort for sure. And they were, those girls were awesome. They're like, they were trying to pick lines that they knew the Lexus could do as well. Um, I did tell Lexus they may need a new fender. But other than that, it's fine. <laughs> just had one little dip. It, you know, she really barks at you when you turn left or right. <laughs> but she handled all of it effortlessly. I was, that was going to be one of my questions. How how were you impressed with the Lexus? Like, did it perform oh. above and beyond, or were there any any other issues that you know you might have felt? It's, I mean, I realize you won the race in it, so it's probably very <laughs> positive. But I don't know. Can you tell me about how the how the car did? You know, in your opinion. No, especially yeah, since, I, I mean, I'm sorry to cut you off, especially since you guys have yeah. driven, like, all the Toyota four-wheel yeah. drives. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah. had, like, a solid, like, base I mean, a of solid experience. base of experience. And, I mean, yeah, along with along with Matt's question, how did it compare? Oh, man. Well, in answer to your question, I really want to um, maybe sell my Land Cruiser and buy one now. Really? So, oh, that wow. might answer your question. Wow. <laughs> well, what, why don't they let you buy that one? She didn't want that one. Yeah, no, she I wants really a new one. They would have, I think they may have some special plans for it. We'll see. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I think I okay. saw it was going on display someplace, right? Well, they did a they did a, a build for a Expo Overland Expo. Oh, like a special GX build. Oh, and uh, she's staying quiet because I don't know <laughs> if uh, <laughs> that's where that's going or what. But you guys, you guys can't see I, this. There's I honestly there, don't know. Winks, winks going on yeah. in the background. Yeah. Wink, wink. She has a picture of the <laughs> the drawing of how it's, what it's going to look like. Uh, so, yeah. so off off that but, off the vehicle. But you, I mean, let's let's go back to Matt's question. I mean, overall, you were yeah. you impressed? Mm-hmm. I was really impressed with this vehicle. Um, it's so it's a lot of people know, but maybe they don't that it's you know built on the Forerunner platform yep. on the yeah. frame. But you've got a V8 engine under that hood. Wow. I think and it's a so Land Cruiser just, Prado, right? Overseas? It is, yes. Yeah. Yep. It has so much power. And usually when I'm driving in the dunes, I've got it in low four, and I'm in like second, third gear. Yep. I actually kept this in high four in first gear. Wow. Um, it did better for me than taking it down a notch. And so it it did awesome. Um I was super impressed. I, I mean, I rock crawled with it. We were going up steep grades at certain points of the rally, you know, where you're in low four and you're just letting it do its thing. Just walk up those trails. Didn't even think about it. Wow. Um, the only issue I would have is it's, well, it's a stock vehicle. So you just mm-hmm. don't have as much clearance. Clearance. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, yeah. but even those big ruts I had, I was, I was able to maneuver it in a way that it, it, I was able to get through it just fine. Um, it did have the, it was a luxury. So it had the airbag suspension in the back. Oh, nice. Um, so I played with that a little bit during those times, but it kicks out if you go over 18 miles per hour. Oh. So you can only do that at really low speeds. Um, but I, that thing, I think the other thing too, I was telling Taylor that really helped us was when you are in a really comfortable vehicle like that. And we talk about this with the Land Cruisers and everything, you know, you just don't have that driving fatigue at the end of the day yeah Hmm. you're like we we would get out and we'd be tired but we didn't feel like we were beat up all day yeah Mm. for sure we felt fine for sure and it was always a joke in the morning especially the first couple mornings it was pretty cold and i'd you know turn on our heated seats (laughs) and i had my heated (laughs) steering wheel and i was like i'm ready (laughs) hey cody don't you have heated seats too in your tacoma no he doesn't shut up no he doesn't (laughs) shut up um, no, somebody has heated yeah. seats. Yeah. So most importantly, how did the yeah. air conditioning work? Because that's the most important thing in my view for four wheeling. Oh yeah. You got to have a, a a well tuned, a highly tuned air conditioning system. I'm assuming I you had that. Agree. <laughs> okay. um, yes. So we also had cooled seats as well. Oh, oh my god. Come on. <laughs> All right. You're starting to Not sell me on yeah. yes. yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a thing? Yes. I didn't even know that thing. Wow. Uh, wow. And, and you know, you know, talking about that, here in Southern California, I don't know other places, the the older GX 460s and 470s are becoming yeah, they're the, trail rigs. They're like the new hot thing. They are. They're becoming, mm-hmm. you're seeing more and more of them. There's a couple of manufacturers that are they're starting to build, you know, armor and suspension. Yeah. Well, a lot of the Toyota suspension works, but... Um, I'm yep. seeing more and more of those GX models hitting the trail, 
And th- I mm-hmm. mean, this is a testament to their quality when you look at what you just did with a brand new one that's going, you know, off the lot onto the dunes. Yeah. And it, and I will tell you guys this too, like I never had a warning light. I never had any issue whatsoever. Um, I am, I do have a lot of driver vehicle sympathy when I drive. That's something that, and it was my own promise to myself. I was like, I will return this car in perfect condition. It will still have a bumper. It will still have even the side. <laughs> yeah. like, Matt, Matt, vehicle I'm going to do sympathy. my absolute best. <laughs> Matt, what's, we're going to deliver it. Vehicle sympathy, Matt. That's something that you, we need to work on, hone your sympathy skills <laughs> no. on any vehicle you yeah. have. Because you no, got to you got to treat them rough so they know <laughs> that's just how it is. <laughs> Who's the alpha get, male? <laughs> yeah, get used to this truck. <laughs> um, <laughs> or renegade. Or renegade. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so one it, of the best quotes from Rod Hall and which passed down to Emily Miller, which passed down to me was, if you want to win a race, you have to first finish. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Your car and you can't even finish. You're never going to win. That's, so that's always yeah. stuck in my mind of like, I have to at least get it to the finish line. If I even want to yeah. hope of winning. That's awesome. So, that's awesome. So yeah. Stay away from racing. It's a great car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, a, you can't do it. You don't, no. you don't physically can't do it. <laughs> Probably not. Um, so when it was all said and done, when you crossed the line last day, mm-hmm. did you know that you had won? I, I didn't. I we had a pretty good idea. We had won, but we didn't know for sure. Um, and even at the finish line, a lot of people were coming up to us and saying like, because they could see the scores all day, which we didn't have access to, and they were like. At, Congratulations! I'm pretty sure you did it. And we're like, is it official? And they're like, no, it's not official. And we're like, but at least thanks we for knew nothing. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We knew great. Though, thanks for your opinion. I guess. <laughs> right. Do you have a trophy in that, your hand? <laughs> <laughs> at that point, though, it was what you'd mentioned earlier of like, if we hadn't have gone for those technical points, mm. I would have been. I would have absolutely regretted it. And I know Taylor would have too. And I know we would have been sitting in that finish line, sweating bullets, not knowing, Yeah. but knowing that we physically did everything we could have done that day. I mean, we got every single point. I think we skipped one black checkpoint that whole day and we made it back on time and we're in one piece. And I kept asking her on the way, like the five minute drive to base camp. I was like, what are we forgetting? Like (laughs) it just seemed too seamless. And I feel like we're, we're getting I was like did we get all the right like she was triple checking all of our plots we were triple checking the time because i was like it just didn't feel it felt so surreal that it could actually happen mm. and so we had a good idea that we had one but we we didn't know for sure and it but with and and i say that to say that at that point it i don't think it would have mattered because i knew that we fought so hard for yeah. it and we there's nothing else we could have done that day so it was kind of like well if somebody did better, kudos. Yeah. That was a really rough day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So how long, and they deserve it. How long did it take before you actually got the official announcement? I think it was two or three hours. Whoa. Dude, that sucks. So for two or three <laughs> yeah. hours, you're sitting there like, uh-huh. wow, let's might as well have something to drink. <laughs> I, I thought she was going to say two or three days. It, oh, like, oh, she's man. still waiting for the official. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, man. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> that that had to be so. That had to be agonizing. <laughs> It it honestly wasn't too bad. It was so fun. And I think because we had, we did know that we had that lead that morning, that we were feeling pretty safe that we had gotten it. Um, but, yeah. and there was so much excitement. They do such, it's so fun to cross that finish line because everyone's just so excited and all of the teams are cheering you on um, when you get there and you've got some press and some media. It's just music and it's a lot of fun. So there's a lot going on to kind of be like, all right. I feel proud of what we just did. I'm proud of how he competed. I'm proud of how he treated everybody on the team. And let's, you know, let the chips let it fall. fall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let the chips fall. So how when you when the when you got the official announcement, kind of what was running through your mind? I I just couldn't believe it, honestly. I I couldn't believe it. I was like, No way. No way did that just happen. There's no way. Like how I I still kind of can't believe it. <laughs> Wow. It's been such a goal of mine for so many years. Well, that, yeah, that's and why, because I, I know it's something that was like up there on your list. It had to be, uh-huh. 
in my mind, it would be either this ultimate, well, it would probably be both. This like ultimate achievement. Yes, I set a goal and I set it. And then the disappointment Mm -hmm. of now I need a new goal. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I was going to ask too. I'm like, oh man, (laughs) now what am I going to (laughs) do? Yeah. Oh, it was so good. I, it was so fun. I called Clay. And when I found out, you you get your phones back when you cross the finish line, which I I never turn mine on right away. I I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. I <laughs> love not having my phone. But I really wanted to chat with Clay. And so about when I knew, um, I gave him a call. And he was just like, did you win the freaking thing? I was like, <laughs> I think I won it. But <laughs> felt so good. He was so excited. Oh, so proud. That's awesome. Again, so cool. Is, so. That is so yeah, cool. It was a great moment. Oh, Jose said that's awesome. Yeah, so, yeah but sure. Cody just, said it like eight times. Right? I'm so, dude, that's my, that's my word. You can't use it. <laughs> Catch um, one of the things that I want to ask you about is: Have you ever? Is this the first time you've done any wheeling here in Southern California? Um, I don't. Um, I've been to Glamis quite a few times. Um, uh, what do you mean by wheeling? No, I, like, I mean like like the Johnson Valley area, yeah. Glamis, mm. that that whole area. Was that your first experience in that a big chunk of that area, other than Glamis? No, uh, my first Rebel Rally, we were in Johnson Valley. Okay, um, and I've been in Glamis probably, gosh, I'd say over ten times. Oh wow, that's where we always do our trainings and everything too. Okay. Mm. So do you, do you mm-hmm. think that gave you a little bit of an advantage? Because if, if you've never been to Glamis or Johnson Valley, that, that can be extremely intimidating terrain with – there's some caveats mm-hmm. the way you have to drive those areas if you don't know that. Do you feel like you had a little bit of an advantage because you had the experience? For sure, yep. And for Taylor, this was her third rally, and she loves Johnson Valley as for the navigation aspect because yeah. there's – you know, you've got those really identifiable features. Yeah, yeah. Um, I told her I hated it because I hated driving it. So <laughs> she was all jacked for it. I'm just like, Ugh. why? Why do, why do you hate Johnson oh. Valley? Whoops! She said whoops. She said earlier. Whoops. I know the Look, whoops. I just, I just hate driving it. I mean, it's beautiful. I love how gorgeous it is. Um, but driving it in stock vehicles is not fun. <laughs> yeah, because <I'll bet. laughs> yeah, there are there are some sections there where you're you're literally on like in, a teeter totter in and for out of ten every, miles. Yeah, in and out of every oh, yeah. valley, lake bed, or whatever is just a hill climb of whoops. And then you get to the other side. There's whoops on the way down. <laughs> there's another lake nope. bed. Then there's another everywhere. Climb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. But I tried to have a good attitude. I, w- I was I complained about it for a minute, and then I was like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not complaining. I'll change my attitude. You had heated and cooled seats. Yeah, yeah. cool. Look, <laughs> I've done I've done those whoops in a CJ7. I don't want to hear about your heated and cooled seat. You know, my that's bum fair. isn't quite warm enough on these whoops. That's not that's not good. <laughs> Come on, that's totally fair. You totally own that. <laughs> so so you 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 crossed the line. You you met your goal. I'm sure you would. Taylor had a. Uh, you know, a huge celebration and, and, you know, Clay and the crew as everybody's behind you. Like how long did it take you to come down from that? Oh man, it's, that's great. Clay was actually asking me that the other day. Um, I think I finally was coming down off of it. What's today? Monday. Um, like Monday. last <laughs> Thursday or Friday, it took about a week. Wow, oh, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Well, because even I'd afterwards, say. there was all the, you know, returning the vehicle yeah, and traveling. the gear and the mm-hmm. travel, right? I mean. Yep. Yeah, I got to, and I intentionally do this. I always intentionally schedule a couple days after the rallies, just especially if I know I'm going to be coming home and being a single mom for a little while, just to give myself that time to kind of transition and come down and get excited, like get pumped to see my kids and kind of go into that next phase. Um but I was, I was definitely still kind of amped at that point. I mean, yeah, I drove to LA. Um, I had to ship all, shipped all my stuff home. Yeah, I saw, I <laughs> saw that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the, you opened up that, like at first you had those, just those bags out. Then you opened up the back hatch and it was like 25 packages yeah. you got to send back. Yeah. Duffel bags are all filthy and dirty. Oh, man. Did you, did you literally then, walk those up on the UPS counter and be like, hey, poof, I, I need to ship that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I came in with like an arm full of stuff and I was like, so I have a lot of things going to one address. And she was like, looked at me. Okay. Well just start bringing it in. I was like, okay. So uh, nice. 10 trips later. And then I've got trophies all over the counter. Cause I had Taylor's and mine. And then one actually goes to Lexus, which is pretty cool. They can have awesome. that in their office. Oh, very cool. Um, so it definitely, you know, all these people just kind of watch and I'm just 
sweating bullets at that point, <laughs> but um, it was it was great. At that point, you don't care. You're like, well, I won the thing, so yeah, gonna, exactly. Who, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I'd be walking around with the uh, with the the trophy like hanging off of my neck, <laughs> like, like, like waiting guard backstage pass, backstage like a medallion, pass. Yeah. just walking yeah. around. <laughs> So, so now that yeah, you now that you've come down, you've had the chance to reflect. What is mm-hmm. what's the takeaway? What's the 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 nugget from this trip? Hmm. I I think there's going to be a few. There's always a few that take a while to surface, but I think the immediate one. I was actually talking with Taylor about that. Was this was at least for me in my life? I can look to people that I look up to, whether it be a celebrity or a motivational speaker or someone in the industry. And you can look at them and look at their success and think, oh, well, they're probably just kind of good at it. And it just happened. And, and you think I would know better by now with (laughs) XO and all the work that we've put into it. Yeah. But I kind of did the same thing with a rally. It was, I would go to these rallies and I'd see the teams that won and I was like, oh, well, they're just really good. They've just done it a lot. So they, they win. And this was the first year I was challenged a lot. I've been doing a lot of personal growth, but like I wrote it in my journal every day for months that I would win the 2019 Rebel Rally. And at that point, I didn't even know how I was going to get there. I just knew I was going to win it. (laughs) Um, And and I was like, no, we're going to win it. And then it was, you know, partnering with Taylor and then having a plan and then attacking that every day. And we, that meant we went to sleep early every night. We wouldn't hang out with all the teens and we were up earlier than everyone else because she was plotting. And it, it was a different rally for us, but it worked. Like yeah. it was able to work for us this time. And I think the takeaway was like, wow, if I actually really apply myself, like it, you really can accomplish these cool, crazy things that you never thought possible. And it also gave me a new respect of all of those people that I look up to and admire to see like, Hey, they, they're working their butts off. Like they have goals and they're meeting those goals and they're working long hours every day that we don't see, but it's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, Winning's not just an accident. No. And so that was probably my, one of my top takeaways that I've hmm, been kind of doing on. Cause I, I mean, uh, Talent will take you to a certain point. Every, exactly. Every, everybody has some level of talent in something, right? And yeah, even you. Everybody, even you, dude. And right. um, thank you. And they, but but if you don't apply yourself, uh, you mm-hmm. you end up just being that talented guy that peaked in high school, like me. <laughs> <laughs> like that's my legacy. But um, it's also hard to. Uh, it's hard to imagine you in high school, like. <laughs> Peaking, yeah. I don't, oh I don't, I don't even think I peaked, well, peaked then. Um, no, I mean, uh, I mean the point. The point is, oh, sorry, Jose, but the the point is that like you see these people that have a success, and you know, yeah, oh, that guy's a professional athlete because he can run fast. But he he mm-hmm. got to run fast because he's been lifting weights five days a week since he was twelve years old and sprinting and has a coach and all the exercise. That's what you you see the end result, the win. You see the end result, the win yeah. of the Rebel Rally. You know, unless you have this conversation, you don't see all the work that went into it. No, what I was going to say mm-hmm. is it's kind of hard to keep track on the goal when you're in it like when you're like when you're tired uh things aren't going like your way uh you it's easy to say you know what i don't want to do this anymore and just give up but it's like if you just keep like like you guys were saying like just just small little wins uh it'll it just one step one step at a time uh you'll you'll accomplish your goal Mm -hmm. absolutely and so with with that now that you take that nugget back to how do you think that's going to change the way you approach things going forward? Mm. That's a great question. Um, Sorry to put you on the spot. I <laughs> no, I love it. It's good. Cause I've been asking myself that question. <laughs> um, one of the things is I'm, first of all, it's, it's really nice to know like, okay, I am capable. That's the other thing that these rallies teach me every time is, and I think I mentioned it before is that, you don't realize how capable are, capable you are of things until you're put in those uncomfortable situations. Mm-hmm. Um, your brain is always going to run away from what's uncomfortable and you have to physically force yourself into those situations and you come out on the other side. It might not have been fun, but you realize like, wow, okay. I didn't, I had no idea I could do that. Um, so with that being said, I think what I've, what it's been helping me with is, any of those 
it makes me feel like a lot more things are attainable if I really, I mean, it sounds cliche, but if I really apply myself and set a goal and actually stick to it and am consistent with it, yeah, like there's no reason why I can't accomplish some things that I want to do next. Yeah. And well, that I would say that for anybody. Yeah. And we're, we're all, gu- I'm guilty of, uh, I'll lay out, oh, I want to do this, right? And mm-hmm. I, I know that these are the things that need to happen. I may or may not do them for for more than a day or two. Like, like I think we're all guilty, yep. guilty of that. Yeah, I'd like to have this, but you know, whether or not we want to put the work in to get there, it, it's a matter of mm-hmm. prioritization. You know what I mean? I, I myself am a pro at procrastination. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I want to be. That's, that's I want to be. Less, that was pretty funny, right? That's no, a hard. That's a hard. That was a sim- I got a sympathy laugh. No. So <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> so no, I, it's. It's so true. Like, um, it, there's a reason people say this a lot because it actually works. And if you find that maybe you didn't carry something through, maybe it wasn't something that you were that passionate about. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was another good idea, but maybe it's Mm -hmm. not the thing that you're supposed to be doing or that you are really, really passionate about about. and are willing to go that extra mile for. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I'm, I know. I know I can count to many uh, specific examples in my life of that. Um, what's next? What is next? Your home, your mm-hmm. your single mom in it for a while. How long are you single mom in it for? Um, I think another week. I have to look at the calendar. I was I was going to bring up the it, calendar. Like we're, yeah, we're, we're watching yeah. we're watching Michelle on video, <laughs> and there's a of, and there's a calendar there's is a calendar that? on the back there that oh, it looks yeah. it looks like all of the markers exploded on the camera, <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you're like this is good too. And you're like I don't even know how you manage that life. <laughs> like it's just, a, but uh, so how long are you I, single for? Oh man, so I I the goal for the team is that they'll be back at some point this weekend or early next week. Okay. Okay. Um, they're filming the last two episodes of the season. So now it's going into launch season okay. of, um, this will be, yeah, Exhibition Overland. We released the trailer right before the rally started called The Great Pursuit. And this, this year has gone through so many changes with this season. It was supposed to be like three different things before we've come to what it is now. <laughs> Hmm. And it's going to be completely different than anything we've ever done. Really? Um, but we're really excited about it because we just, you change, you um, change directions and it'll, we'll always still have the EXO flavor. And, but for us, we want to keep pushing ourselves to growth. And so that's going to look different for us than a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. So this is a season for us to really grow and fail and learn and try new things. And, this season will be a big part of that. Well, and, that, and I mean, that's part of the journey of XO from the beginning is we've watched you guys, you know, you and Clay and the, the entire crew grow and evolve from a bunch of guys that had their trucks and went out and did something to this mm-hmm. media production company, to these storytellers, to Rebel Rally winners. I mean, we've, I think that's part of the way that the audience connects with you guys is watching that evolution and you guys being willing to put it out there, right? That's the vulnerability, mm. the vulnerability of, of uh, creators throwing their failures and their wins and all that stuff out on, on the stage for everybody to look at is, is commendable. And, and I think that is mm. one of the things that resonates with me when I watch the shows is, oh man, I like, I want to hang out with these guys. These seem like cool people. You know what I mean? Like, let's go, you know, that, and I think that, Watching that evolution is uh, is is compelling to us as an audience. Hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, we we try really hard. It's we can't if if we're not pushing ourselves, that'll come across on camera, and it's not fun. Like because then we're just out doing it to do it for mm-hmm. yeah. the formula's sake or whatever. Yeah. And and we really had a lot of heavy conversations about that this year all right, well, what are we passionate about? What's the next thing? What's the next goal we could do? And for Clay, that was flight. Mm -hmm. Um, It's been a dream of his since he was a boy. And so it was like, okay, how do we make this happen? And what does that look like? And so that's where a lot of that came from for that you'll see in this coming season. Oh, very cool. 
I was going to make the joke yeah. the next thing you know, they're going to be flying UFOs or something. And uh, no, <laughs> who knows? I, was, I swear to God, I was going to say, I think you guys are tracking for like NASA. I think you guys are heading to space next. It's like XO <laughs> hunting Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, oh. Don't, don't, Rochelle, don't oh, get these guys God. started, please. Can we help? Hey, yeah, by the way, if you guys do that, uh, me and Matt are totally in. <laughs> yes. I have a I lot of it. We, I have a lot of experience. Talk to about that. <laughs> yeah, no, the, I, I got to rail these guys back in every time it's sasquatch luck. and aliens and good and luck dude. Oh, i love uh, it yeah, oh, yeah. i want to put it. i want to put a i want to believe poster up here <laughs> yeah. but, uh, <laughs> is oh yeah <laughs> oh man well, yeah and then for me for what's next i'm i'm working on a lot of i've i've had a lot of ideas that i've wanted to implement for to get more women involved and just to continue i'm that's definitely my passion is to see to hopefully help give women the tools of confidence that has helped me so much in my life and my journey. And I'm still working out the how to's, but at some point you just got to start somewhere. So I need to Mm. take my own advice and I just need to start throwing some stuff out there. I, I, my suggestion is write it in your journal tonight. Yeah. Pen first thing. I like it. First thing tonight, I am going to give, I'm going to give this to the women in the community today. Like that's, I think that's the I first that. the first start. So I will do that. Well, you know what I I appreciate. This has been great. Uh, the first conversation was fantastic. I got a lot of positive feedback. Everybody loved to hear the story. I think this just puts a nice bow on it and wraps it up with just the, a, a great story behind the win and all the stuff that you guys are working on. And I, I can't thank you enough for for being willing to come on and talk to us again. Uh, again, yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I I was I told these guys I was super surprised. She, just, she volunteered. I was like, she's yeah. gonna come back she again. Like, <laughs> okay. She, I love I hanging out with you guys. So, sweet. <laughs> 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 Somehow we didn't scare her away, but um, no, th- this is this is fantastic, and and you know we're 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 gonna obviously watch what you guys are doing next with XO and you personally, and uh, you know the first uh, first seminar you have about empowering women, I will sign up just to like uh, be in the background and take notes or something. Um, but but I think it's. Uh, I think it's very commendable everything that you're doing, you know, individually and as part of the team. And we love watching what you guys are doing. So, so you want to be a creepy guy? Yeah, in, in, the, back in the back of, back of an all women seminar. Did, I didn't Dude. know where I was going to go with it, and then yeah. I kind of like pulled out at the last uh, minute, no, like just didn't. kind of off no, the road. You didn't. Are you going to no, you you know, pull into the convention center in a blacked out van or something? <laughs> Uh, no, I didn't think look. That I didn't think that. He he drives down the road. I'm not. I'm not gonna stop him. He's going down. No, I know where he's I, going. I totally derailed that one. Yes, you did. So I apologize for my creepiness. <laughs> uh, but the, at, the, at the end of the day, seriously, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate having you on the on the show. And anytime you have something to to talk about, you've got an open invitation here with us. Thank you so much, guys. I. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on again, and it's a blast hanging out with you. It goes an hour goes like that. So yeah, I don't it, even know where the time it, went. So. It does. Thank it you. Does. No, thank you, and you have a fantastic night. You too. Thank you. We'd like to thank Nexon Tire for their support. We've been extremely impressed with the Rodian MTX tires, and we are excited about what the future holds for Nexon. If you want to be part of this growing community, please go to NexonTireUSA.com and check out their complete line of tires for your rig. We would love to hear your feedback. Please go to TrailChasers.net slash contact and drop us a line or leave us a voicemail at 951-395-DIRT. You can stay up to date with all our shenanigans by going to TrailChasers.net slash register and signing up for our newsletter or follow us on Instagram at the Trail Chasers. Do you want us to talk about you on the show? Best way to do it is leave us a review on iTunes. And thanks again to Ryan Torigno for all the music on the show. You can find him at ryantorigno.com. <laughs>